We're live inside of a Macomb County marijuana facility. I should say Nick Monticelli is there. Yeah, Nick Monticelli is there. He uh, marijuana for recreation became uh, legal back in 2018 and a lot has changed since then, Nick. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of why we wanted to do this. So obviously today is 420 day. It's a unofficial holiday for those in the cannabis industry. But we were curious, you know, it's been what five years now and four since it really started hitting the market. What's changed in the industry? What are the consumer habits like? So this is a massive grow facility here in Warren, private stock cannabis, and they do a lot of things behind the scenes. Honestly, the, the science and the chemistry is amazing to try to understand. Now, we also want to start talking about, again, consumer habits. The sales, unbelievable. Last month, they set a record, $250 million just in the state of Michigan. A lot of that money coming from, believe it or not, parents who are switching to marijuana versus, say, a drink at the end of the day. Ever since Michigan voters decided to legalize recreational marijuana in 2018, the cannabis landscape has changed dramatically. In Detroit, there seems to be a dispensary and a billboard on every corner, which made us wonder, have habits changed as well? especially when it comes to dealing with stress. Many will have a drink, a beer, a cocktail, or a glass of wine to unwind. And one group we know carries a lot of stress are parents. So we asked Click on Detroit readers, parents, do you consume cannabis to relax? 1,700 people responded, and 42% of those parents said yes, they frequently consume cannabis to relax. 15% said sometimes, 5% said rarely, and 38% said never. So while there is a spread there, the majority say yes, they do consume cannabis to relax. Moan and... And the companies making those cannabis products know it too. Right here, we're doing dream caramels. So they're being poured and cut. Taking us on a tour of Lion Labs, President Ryan Ratzloff says their main goal is finding innovative alternatives for those using or wanting to try cannabis products. The process of making our caramels takes about a day. They have candy, chocolates, even lotions. Their newest product is called Pot Dots, each with one milligram microdose of THC. These are pot dots that have just received their um, initial candy coating. Uh, this stage will add coloring and then a final coat to lock everything in. Their facility is like a science laboratory. Our freezer will hold anywhere from 20 to 25,000 pounds and we keep it between negative 15 and negative 30 uh, Celsius. Every room specifically designed to help with specific products. In each of these tanks we have about a thousand kilos of, of Belgian chocolate. Products going to a much different customer base than it used to. A lot of baby boomers and parents are moving into the cannabis space. Um, they're getting a similar response at the end of the day. Like you said, they want to relax, they want to chill. Um, and, you know, hitting a vape or having a couple edibles at the end of the day is a perfect way to, re to relax and unwind. But that also comes with a warning from our Dr. Frank McGeorge. I understand why someone might use marijuana for stress relief, just like they might use alcohol. Unfortunately, the stress relief comes with the side effect of poor judgment. And for a parent, that can be problematic. The one thing I'll say about marijuana is, in my decades of dealing with people impaired by alcohol or marijuana, in many people, alcohol creates dangerous, abusive changes in personality. Marijuana rarely does that. So while I wouldn't recommend either, in my experience, alcohol creates more volatile situations. Either way, the cannabis industry is changing and growing on an ever-changing landscape. A lot of the, the negative stigmas around um, crime or violence or bad intentions or bad reactions or what will happen from taking the products or consumption have all lifted and gone away. And there's been a long history of uh, each state coming online and successfully um, bringing tax revenue in and a safe, comfortable environment for consumers. Back out here live inside of private stock cannabis in Warren. Something else to consider that Ryan was just talking about is that tax base, that tax revenue. Again, just last month in March, Michigan sold about $250 million worth of marijuana products. They also talked about how much money is coming in and going back out. Last year, about $150 million went back into 
local governments, community programs, things like that. So there are a lot of layers to this, again, an ever-changing landscape in the marijuana industry. Yeah. We're live here in Warren, Nick Bonacelli, Local 4.